Strange encounters of the sexual kind. The not-so-subtle arts of really fucking things up. This book is dedicated to all those wonderful women who drink, smoke, do drugs, keep themselves fit and pretty, watch more porn than I do, and refuse to fight their instincts. You know who you are. Chapter 1. Miyana's Mirror. Koh Samui, Thailand. No matter how good looking you are, which I'm not, or how charismatic you think you might be, which I don't, it's still a rare thing for a girl to approach a guy out of the blue and start a conversation with obvious sexual undertones. This equality bullshit women are always on about, it's a bit of a one-way street in their heads. There are still things they consider man's work, basically stuff they don't like the sound of. Rejection, for example. Having the ego kicked to death every week. The most modern of feminists suddenly comes over all old-fashioned if there's a chance gender equality might kick her in the balls she doesn't have. So, it's quite the thing when it actually does happen. Takes even the biggest players by surprise if the girl has been off his radar. But it happens. And it happened to me. That's the beauty of alcohol. She was a TV editor, and she had won a trip to anywhere in the world with her production crew for finishing a documentary way ahead of schedule. They had all agreed on Koh Samui, and let's face it, why wouldn't you? So there I was, standing at the entrance of the Green Mango nightclub in Chiweng Beach. A bunch of guys on a self-destruct mission had rocked up next to me, convinced I was someone they actually knew. Cocaine was my guess. They just wouldn't shut up. But their good time buzz seemed infectious, and party girls like that sort of thing. I prefer guys like you. She had appeared out of nowhere. She looked me up and down like something to be eaten raw. She seemed cute enough. Late twenties, blonde shoulder length hair, five six, sharp, angular face. Not so much a classic beauty, but attractive in a confident kind of way. She was so close to me, I couldn't get a proper view of her body. She seemed slim up top, but down below might have been a total burger fest. I had to shout to be heard over the music. I could be a total bastard. She shook her head. No, I can tell. Oh, of course you can. Yeah, I can. By the way the others respond to you. She reached up to pull my head closer to her face. I've watched those guys for an hour. And all they've done is chase everything. You haven't. I now notice the strong accent. I can't get where you're from. Croatia. Oh, really? Did you bring a bag of parsnips with you? She pulled a frown. I interpreted as go fuck yourself and your parsnips. Oh well, can't win them all. She puckered her lips. I'm too drunk to talk right now. I don't like shouting. Shall we meet tomorrow somewhere? I went along with it knowing this would never happen. We agreed on the beach in front of the Ark Bar, not too far from where we stood. Cool, she said. 2pm, see you there. And with that, she walked off through the crowd. I reckoned I had as much chance of seeing her again as Pol Pot funding a philosophy course. But curiosity gets all the cats in the end, and the next day... Although deliberately 30 minutes late, I couldn't resist a peek, if only to see what she'd looked like in daylight. She hadn't showed, or maybe she had, and got bored waiting. I decided to head back home. I didn't give a cat's crack, to be honest. Samui was full of pretty girls on a mission, girls much prettier than Miss Parsnips. No need for a man to sell himself short. And as if to prove that theory, I found myself speeding up to get close to what must have been the most incredible female form I'd ever seen, walking away toward the bar. From behind, it was art, toned, blemish-free, smooth, natural, golden ratio perfection. So fantastic was this form, even the Israeli chicks were nudging each other to take a look. This, I thought, this is the kind of thing I should be going all in for, 
not some root vegetable munching Eastern European 80s fan. I was within touching distance, mesmerised, staring at the arse like a zombie on Valium. Then it stopped, suddenly, and turned away from me. Oh, there you are. The sarcasm seemed to touch heavy. I managed to lift my head from the lower half, realising just a little too late my jaw was still hanging open. Her eyebrows twitched above her Ray-Ban pilots. You're late. I laughed in the way someone might if their ceiling had collapsed, hitting everything except them. I didn't think you'd be here. Half an hour ago. I couldn't help look her up and down. Well, all I can say is I'm really sorry for being late. She clicked her cheeks. Oh, I'm pretty certain of that. Her name was Mirjana. We hung out all afternoon, met her friends in the evening, got on like a firework factory and a blowtorch, and got horrendously drunk playing a game where I had to guess the cost of staying in their resort for one night. I never did get it right, and every time I got it wrong, I had to drink some foul imitation peach snaps that totally fucked me. Of course, they wouldn't tell me if I'd got the price right anyhow. They just wanted to play this very silly game and get me pissed. Miana's place was at the outrageously expensive northern end of Chueng Beach, and after no more drink could go down, the two of us made our way back there. For the whole walk she kept saying she didn't want sex, but it would be nice to share her five-star room with someone special. Of course, this was all total bullshit, but she kept saying it over and over as if convincing herself before pushing me up against a wall and kissing me. Women and their confusing signals. And they wonder why blokes don't approach them. We got there in the end, greeted by a uniformed Thai who saluted us. The bungalow had it all. A sea view, palm trees either side, a veranda, widescreen TV, full-length mirrors, dimmer lights, drinks cabinet, his and hers showers, a huge gold ceiling fan, chicadas chirping outside, and air conditioning. She didn't want to use the AC, so despite the ceiling fan spinning at full speed, the room was hot and sticky. Quite fitting, really. We hit the bed like porn stars, ripping off each other's clothes with the sort of abandon that tears sleeves and pings buttons all over the place. I was naked in seconds, Miyana down to just her underwear. The bra came off in a flash, that hypertone tanned, tight body now covered by just the skimpiest of black panties. Even the alcohol spinning effect couldn't detract from the moment right here in front of me on her knees, blonde hair sticking to her face, was the hottest body on the island, reaching up for my cock before sinking it into her mouth. But she paused momentarily, reaching over to the end of the bed for the light controller, one hand on my cock, the other pointing the fucking remote at the light switch on the wall, lowering the lights so I could only just see her. Strange, if there was one girl who needn't be shy about her body. As the oral sex commenced, me standing at the side of the bed, it seemed the most natural thing in the world to reach over to the drinks fridge and pry inside. Lo and behold, champagne! Well, sparkling wine to be precise, but I wasn't counting. It even had a proper plastic cork, one that went popping and pinging into the ceiling fan, banging around the room like a ricocheted gunshot. Even Miyana found some space to laugh as I guzzled a third before pouring another third over her as she carried on choking herself. Now my eyes had adjusted to the dimmed lights, the moonlight did just enough to make her visible, picking out her curves and her head going back and forth. The sight of the champagne running down her face as she savaged my cock was, as you can imagine, quite a fucking thing to witness, and with all that happening, one of my simple life truths came back to me. If you want to catch tigers, you go where there are tigers. Thus, if you want hyperfit sex babes to happily blow you in five-star beach resorts while you pour champagne over them, well, you get the idea. The champers had hit the spot, 
my head spinning faster than the ceiling fan. Miana's body was not only fantastic to the eyes, but heaven to the touch. It had the consistency of a firm rubber ball, the sort you could drop from shoulder height, only to see it bounce three stories higher. I couldn't hold back. Gripping her midriff with both hands, I manoeuvred her up the bed, her head sliding neatly between the pillows. The bed sheets were soaked with champagne and sweat. Licking down her navel, it seemed she was too. I couldn't wait to bury my head in that pussy. A fantastic idea. The Chicadas agreed, rattling away outside like an invasion of giant chopsticks. I reckon they must have had a pretty good view, so I thought I'd add to their show. Reaching over to the side of the bed, I grabbed the last of the champers, shaking it up before soaking Miyana's panties with it, the foam pissing out of the bottle. She squealed with laughter, but as I went to grab them, she made a deft move, both hands grabbing my ears as if my head were the FA Cup. She pulled me up and started kissing me. Now, there aren't many girls who don't like a tongue up their wadger. The ones who don't tend to be heavily into anal or photos of their dad. Miana had casually mentioned earlier she wasn't. I tried again. She laughed, refusing to let me go down below her belly button. And then a bizarre thought struck me. There are literally hundreds of ladyboys on Samui, and even as a straight heterosexual male, I can honestly say they look better than most of the girls. Their bodies are perfect. They appear more feminine. They dress better. Most of them are ridiculously beautiful. But there is the small problem that they will have a piss standing next to you. And they'll give it a good shake too. It kind of kills the vibe. That said, it's easy for some blokes to get fooled. It's even easier for some blokes to say, I didn't know, when they knew all too fucking well. I reached over to the fridge and grabbed a beer, popping off the top with Miana's cigarette lighter. I poured a little over her panties. Are you some kind of Croatian tranny? She found this hilarious, so much so, she didn't resist as I slowly made a move to pull them down. What she did do was reach for the light dimmer again, lowering the lights so they were still on, but utterly ineffective. Fuck it, I didn't care. She didn't have a cock. All clear, I was drunk, sweaty, covered in sparkling wine, beer, saliva, and was just about to add some pussy into the mix. I love eating pussy. I fucking love it. If the girl is toned and slim and keeps the bouffant under control, I'm diving in with lead boots and no snorkel. Just try and stop me. I like the taste of it, the feel of it, the smell of it, Yes, I'm a fucking dog. I might not sniff arseholes and chase frisbees, but pussy is another thing. But pussy tastes a bit weird when covered with a mix of Chang beer and sugary, fizzy wine which has warmed up to body temperature. But I'm a trooper in these matters, and away I trooped. By the sounds of things, Miana enjoyed it in equal measure rather coolly reaching down for the half-spilled Chang bottle and taking a swig giving the moment that bitchin' porn feel. What she didn't drink, she poured over herself, the cold fizz slithering its way down her navel, into her pussy and into my mouth. When the beer ran dry, she did it with water. I have no idea how long I was down there, but when I'd finished, even the Chicadas had gone to sleep. The night's intake of alcohol had suddenly hit me with a bang, and I felt less than stable. You can mix many drinks together, but wine and chang are as compatible as shit and twiglets. I slumped, face down in the pillow, next to Miriana, psyching myself up to uh, actually fuck her. A little moment later, she prodded me. Go have a shower. I haven't finished yet. The taste of chang kept repeating in my mouth not a pleasant flavour. She prodded me again. Just, you know, you're, you're really hot. Go on, go have one. In a minute. I might have been passing out when she prodded me again. I think you really should have a shower. 
It actually irked me. I pushed myself up in a press-up motion and stared at her in the near darkness. All right, I'll have a bloody shower. When I flicked on the light switch in the his shower, the reflection that greeted me in the full-length mirror might have made me scream if I had been sober. But as I was a drunken, swivel-eyed mess who hadn't slept properly for two days, it only just mildly shocked me. It did, however, literally stop me in my tracks before curiosity took me closer to the mirror. I was still licking the weird taste of my lips when I leaned forward for a better view. And no, I wasn't seeing things. Starting at mid-nose level, covering my entire lower face, neck, shoulders, chest and navel, a healthy smattering of good old once-a-month menstrual blood soaked me as if I'd been wrestling with a semi-slaughtered pig. Well, that explained it. Chang tastes shite. I know that. But it doesn't taste like iron bars. And sparkling wine is pretty inoffensive stuff. As the cold water gushed over me, I spat out mouthfuls of the stuff before making use of the freebie toothbrush and toothpaste. The water ran off me so violently red, it looked like the shower scene from Psycho. It all made sense, though. Of course she didn't want sex. In polite society, she really couldn't. Dimming the lights, I supposed, was a hedge against any unsightly mishaps that might have already occurred. But in the end, the urge had been too great and she couldn't resist. Entering the bedroom area, the lights were still dimmed, but bright enough to see everything. Miyana sat with her back up against the headboard, knees pulled up to her chin, her entire head and body covered in a white sheet, just her elbows protruded. Sorry, she mumbled, looking and sounding rather like an embarrassed ghost. The used sheets had been bundled into a huge ball and thrown to one side of the bed. They looked like props from an episode of M.A.S.H., I pulled the sheet down from Mayana's face. She stared up at me with one of those apologetic, oh shit, kind of smiles. I looked around at the carnage, slowly nodding my head. So then, uh, how much did this room cost? And that's all for now, folks. If you've enjoyed these two stories from the beginning of my book, you can click in the link below and you can buy it in a Kindle form on Amazon or a paperback version. If you'd like me to carry on doing the audio version of these, leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, a small contribution to my PayPal account will motivate me to do it because it all takes time and a lot of effort. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the reading and goodbye for now.